Hi, this is Don Goldberg for TechView, and I'm here today with Andrew Kirkpatrick from Adobe, who's in charge of accessibility issues. And Andrew, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, accessibility in the government. In 2001, there was Section 508 requirements that basically said, and tell me if I get this wrong, that agencies need to make sure they're purchasing technology that's accessible to individuals with um, disabilities. So here we are nine years later. How are the agencies doing? Yeah, it's um, uh, been a while. The, the agencies have, I mean, there's you know, very much a mixed bag um, in terms of how uh, government agencies uh, have performed with regard to accessibility. And mm -hmm. you know, not just agencies, but you know, industry in general has worked hard over this time to make it uh, so that there's uh, more and uh, more straightforward solutions and more right. of them uh, to deliver accessible content. Um, but there's uh, you know, a tremendous amount of business that's transacted through the government. And I think that one of the criticisms has been that there hasn't been as much an active monitoring of uh, how accessibility has been, been uh, complied with uh, mm -hmm. within the government. Mm -hmm. So uh, within the past uh, couple of years, we've gone through a refresh of the Section 508 standards at the right. Access Board that's currently in progress. Right. Um, and one of the key pieces there is looking at um, the procurement aspects of it and monitoring uh, you know, how compliance will actually be um, measured and uh, conducted. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, uh, it's an ongoing challenge because there's, there's so much content and so much information that's, uh, that's going on out there that um, making sure that it's accessible while important is also a right. bit overwhelming. Right. Well, so you know, Adobe, for example, like other companies, makes software tools, you know, Acrobat PDF, Flash, and there's accessibility you know, features built in, but how do you educate the developers, the designers, the people who are creating PDF documents, for example, that they need to turn these on? Yeah, it's, it's really a, it's, it's a huge challenge for us. Um, you know, some of the ways we do that is by making sure within our products that these features are turned on by default, right. uh, so that someone has to go and turn them off. Um, and we have this in products like uh, Adobe Dreamweaver, where there's prompting for authors who are creating web pages and um, allowing, allowing them to see a prompt for an image equivalent when they insert an image into a web page, mm -hmm. or a form label when they insert a form control into a web page. And similarly, you know, with Acrobat, you know, the ability to generate a tagged PDF via PDF Maker in Microsoft Word uh, is enabled by default. Someone can go and turn it off, um, but it's, it's, on, it's on by default. But you know, there's, there's really, I mean, there's so many people that are out there creating content Right. Um, that you know, making sure that they're aware of all the best practices, you know, in terms of what they need to do within Word in order to create an accessible PDF document. You know, what's do they have to use styles? Do they need to add image equivalents? And it's you know, there's you know, thousands and thousands of people out there. Mm -hmm. So we've created resources and we work with uh, external advocacy groups uh, to help try and get the word out. But um, there's always more to do. Um, within uh, the context of uh, HTML when HTML accessibility was still new. And this mm -hmm. is sort of in the time frame of right. you know, 1999, 2000, where it was really picking up. Um, there was a lot of work by uh, advocacy groups and individuals with disabilities who you know, really took it upon themselves you know, to make sure that uh, authors knew that you know, they were being left out because of actions the authors were or were not taking. Right. And that's something that you know, we still need to um, you know, work to try and make sure that can happen within the context of PDF and Flash and application development uh, as well, because you know these are the really powerful voices that uh, that convince people to do the right thing in many cases. Right. Well, so you know you've got ubiquitous technologies, like I said, like Flash and PDF that everybody has. You've got user communities that they may be visually impaired, they may be hearing impaired, or they may be you know uh, I'm not sure what the right term is, but they may just not have the use of the limbs as well. Right. Those are different challenges for people creating documents, for cre people creating software tools. How much are you working with their different individual groups to make sure that their needs are met? Right. Yeah, and, and you know, depending on the type of disability that people have, and of course sometimes people have multiple disabilities right. as well, which uh, complicates matters uh, you know, f further still. But um, I mean, there's some types, some types of uh, challenges in terms of the authoring process you know, uh, you know, making sure your content works for someone who who requires use of the keyboard. They can't use the mouse. Right. You know, uh, there's certain types of things that we're able to do a little bit more easily. I mean, when we develop our uh, 
interfaces when we develop components that people use, uh, we can ensure that there's keyboard access in there to a much higher degree. But uh, when we talk about you know, enabling screen reader access for someone who's blind, you know, and there's data that needs to be added by the author, right. you know, whether that's an image or linking a form control um, with, with, a, with a proper label. So that it tends to be um, that you know, one of the criticisms that accessibility gets is that there's a lot of focus on blindness. Exactly. And you know, that, it, that is, in fact, you know, in large part because there's a lot of attention that needs to be paid, paid to creating additional content and right. making explicit semantic linkages within the content for that audience. But there's, but there's also uh, work that you know, needs to go on for video with closed captioning for mm -hmm. people who are deaf or hard of hearing. Um, so, you know, the attention to accessibility issues, you know, for authoring is not even across disability groups, um, but right. we do, you know, we do our best to make sure that we're handling all the issues um, that we can handle on our side to make it easier for authors. Right. Um, so. Well, definitely yeah. a big challenge. <laughs> You've got a lot of different constituencies there that need to be, you know, have the right tools, and it's, uh, you know, especially with someone like Adobe, where it's all very visually based, that's a, that's a real challenge. But we appreciate your coming on TechView for us and uh, look forward to watching sort of how you're doing uh, in the outreach and, and how Section 508, as it gets uh, reviewed, where that comes out. Excellent. And you can, you can find out more information at, uh, at the Adobe Accessibility website also, which is adobe.com slash accessibility. Great. We'll look forward to having you back. Thank you. I'm Don Goldberg for TechView.